Hello everyone, and welcome to another Kinetic Type tutorial. Today, I'm going to share with you how to design and animate this kinetic text effect using Adobe After Effects. Let's kick things off by taking a quick look at what we'll be creating. We have the word Sonder, centered, solid, and stable, while duplicate layers smoothly follow with a delayed position animation, creating a mesmerizing kinetic flow. The movement feels fluid and hypnotic, with each letter of Sonder contributing to the effect. To achieve this motion, we'll use an expression for the position that controls all the copies with just a couple of keyframes. We'll also be able to control the timing of the copy's delay with a slider, giving you easy control over the motion. So yeah, let's get started. First things first, let's set up a new composition. I'm going to make mine 1080 by 1080 pixels to get a nice square aspect ratio. Perfect for social media posts. Set the frame rate to 30 frames per second and the duration to 10 seconds. Once you've got those settings, Click OK. Next, let's create a new solid for the background. Go to Layer, then New, and select Solid. Choose a background color you like, and give it a name like Background. Now, select the Type tool and type your word. I'm going with Sonder for this example. Choose your favorite font, and adjust the size to make it stand out. Once you've got your text looking good, select the background layer and press Ctrl, or Command plus D to duplicate it. Then, select both the duplicated background and your text layer. Right-click and choose Precompose. Give your new precomp a meaningful name, like Sonder Text Comp, and make sure to select Open New Composition. Inside your new text composition, let's focus on the word by selecting the Region of Interest tool. It's at the bottom of the composition panel. Draw a selection around your word to define the area of interest. Then go to the top menu, click on Composition, and select Crop Comp to Region of Interest. Now, our composition is just a bit bigger than our text, which is exactly what we want. Let's head back to our main composition. Now, align the text composition to be right at the center of our main comp. This will be our main text layer. With our main text layer in place, let's start animating. Select the text comp layer and press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Make sure this new copy is placed under the main text layer. With the duplicated layer selected, press P to reveal the position property. We'll set our first keyframe here at the beginning of the timeline, ensuring the text is centered. Now move the timeline cursor to 1 second and 15 frames. Then move your text layer downward to create the motion. Select both keyframes, right click, go to Keyframe Assistant and choose Easy Ease to smooth out the animation. Let's give it a quick preview. It might seem simple now, but trust me, this is all the animation we need to create that mesmerizing effect. Now, let's duplicate the layer we just animated. On this new duplicated layer, we'll remove the keyframes, since we don't need them here. Next, we'll add a slider control to our main text layer, to help control the delay timing for the duplicates. Select the main text layer, the one on top, go to Effect, then Expression Controls and select Slider Control. Let's set the slider value to 8 for now. Now, it's time to apply the expression to the layer without keyframes. With the layer we just prepared, the one without keyframes selected, open its position property. While holding the ALT key, click on the stopwatch icon to open the expression editor. Here, we'll write our expression. Delay, frames equals, and using the pick whip tool, select the slider effect we just applied into the layer above. Now, what's happening here? This line is grabbing the slider control from the layer above. The value on this slider will represent our delay in frames for this effect. By setting this to a variable, we can easily adjust the delay by changing the slider value, rather than diving into the code each time. Next, let's convert this frame-based delay into seconds. So, here's the code. Delay time equals delay in frames multiplied by this composition's frame duration, semicolon. What are we doing here? Since the slider value is in frames, multiplying it by the composition's frame duration, which is the length of each frame in seconds, gives us delay time in seconds. This way, the timing stays consistent across different compositions or frame rates. Now, let's introduce an offset to control the stagger effect for each layer. This line says, time offset equals open parenthesis, this composition's number of layers minus index, close parenthesis multiplied by delay time, semicolon. Why this? Time offset staggers each layer based on its stacking order. The calculation thiscomp.numlayers index means that the lower a layer sits in the layer stack, the more delay it will have. Multiplying this by delay time extends the delay for each subsequent layer. Great, now let's specify the layer we want each layer to follow. For that, we'll say 
target layer equals and using the pick whip tool select our layer with the keyframes animation. What's happening here? We're setting a variable target layer to point to our layer with motion. This layer's position will serve as the reference point that all other layers follow, applying the staggered timing effect to mimic its movements with delay. Finally, let's use this target position and apply our delay. Here's the line. Target layer, period, position, period, value at time, open parenthesis, time, minus time offset, close parenthesis, semicolon. What does this mean? This line retrieves the position of target layer, but at a delayed moment in time, determined by time minus time offset. This way, each layer mimics the position of target layer, but is delayed based on its offset value, creating that nice staggered animation effect. Now that we have our expression in place, let's bring the effect to life. Select the layer we just applied the expression to and press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate it multiple times. Let's say 20 times or even more. As you duplicate, each new layer will automatically follow the expression we've set up. Now press play to preview the animation. Look at this amazing effect we've just created. It's fully controlled by those two keyframes on the bottom layer and the slider on the top layer. So yeah, this is basically the structure of the entire project. By the way, if you're enjoying this tutorial and finding it helpful, consider supporting me on my Buy Me A Coffee page. For just one dollar, you can get access to amazing scripts and working files, and your support really means a lot. It helps me continue creating content like this. Now let's get back to the tutorial. To add more depth to our animation, let's create an upward motion as well. This will make our effect even more dynamic and engaging. First, select all the layers we just created. Right-click on them and choose Precompose. We'll name this new precomp Text Motion Down. Now, in the Project panel, select the Text Motion Down composition. Press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate it and rename the duplicated comp to Text Motion Up. Next, drag the Text Motion Up comp into your main composition. At this point, both comps are in the main composition, but they have the same downward animation. Let's adjust the motion direction for the upward movement. Open the Text Motion Up composition and inside select the animated layer, the one with keyframes. Adjust the second position keyframe to move upward instead of downward. And since we use expressions, all the duplicate layers will automatically adjust and follow the new upward motion. Now head back to your main composition and press play to see both the upward and downward motions working together. We now have one set of text layers moving down and another set moving up creating a dynamic and engaging kinetic typography effect. Because I like to have a bit more control, let's create an adjustment layer. Go to Layer, then New, and select Adjustment Layer. On this layer, we'll add a tint effect for easy color adjustments. Go to Effect, then Color Correction, and choose Tint. We'll also add a slider control to this adjustment layer. Go to Effect, then Expression Controls, and select Slider Control. This will serve as our master delay control. Now, let's link the sliders so we can control everything from one place. First, lock the effects control panel of the adjustment layer so it's easily accessible. Open each of the text motion down and text motion up compositions. Inside each, select the main text layer, the one with the slider control. Press E to reveal the effects and while holding the Alt key, click on the stopwatch icon next to the slider to open the expression editor. Use the Pick Whip tool to link it to the slider control on the adjustment layer in the main composition. Repeat this process for both compositions. Now, we can adjust the delay timing for all layers from one place. Plus, with the tint effect on the adjustment layer, color adjustments are a breeze. Really cool, right? We now have easy control over the colors and the delay timing right here in the main composition. That's basically it. Now, let's enjoy our freshly made kinetic type animation. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you post your creation online, don't forget to tag me. I love seeing your work. And again, if you want to support this project and get access to amazing scripts and working files, consider joining my Buy Me A Coffee page for just $1. Your support means a lot and helps me continue creating content like this. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, a great life, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.